What do corporate lawyers and especially trainee corporate lawyers actually do in an average day? As I've gone through my first six months working in a big corporate law firm, I think it's made me realize how little I really understood what kinds of work I would actually be doing once I made the transition from student to full-time lawyer. So I thought I'd spend the time today that I would spend in the office catching up with friends at lunchtime or having an afternoon coffee, chatting you guys through the kind of work I've been doing and the hours I've been working. And we'll see whether or not today turns into an all-nighter. No spoilers. Working from home, it's insanely tempting to slip out of bed at 8.30 and be online by 8.45, which is a habit I've slipped into once or twice already. Pretty much the biggest benefit of lockdown though for me is that we have tons of morning time to ourselves, where we don't have to be rushing to get ready and commuting. Although it can be earlier, I generally start work anywhere between 8.45 and 10 a.m., depending on how busy things are and whether there is stuff that needs doing urgently. Now to start the day, as a lawyer, I spend a lot of time sat at my desk. So I've also set myself the target since I started work in the Dunap, my habit tracker, of running twice a week and working out twice a week. So at around 8ish I usually check my work emails to make sure nothing urgent has come in overnight and all the more so this morning as we have a signing happening. After my shower I get ready and in terms of what I have to wear my firm are pretty chilled. Uh, they're happy for me to wear jeans and a t-shirt or a casual shirt like the one I'm wearing today. If I do occasionally have a video client call then I will put on a proper shirt though. I then head out for the final part of my morning routine which really puts me into work mode. My artist official morning commute and we're off time for a walk so it's basically just a 15 to 20 minute walk where I think about life generally and then about the stuff that I either need or want to do at work today and during the week so as it's Monday morning and I didn't have any work to do over the weekend, woohoo! I put my work laptop on top of the office shelves out of sight over the weekend and so I grabbed that down. I'm also disciplined in just keeping my work laptop on my desk when it's time to work for Clifford Chance. I also have different notebooks for my video stuff and work stuff. So my CC notebook comes out and I start to plan my day. I use Trello to prioritize the key pieces of work I need to get done and put those into my physical notebook. So 40 I grab myself a bowl of cereal and have that while I log on and get to work and I can definitely count the number of times I've done this on one hand but today we are being pushed pretty hard to get these signing emails out so I get to it ASAP with my bowl of cereal and this takes a solid few hours. By 11.50 after very many emails and a few calls I'm ready for a coffee. Okay, so it's around 11.50 and I've had a very crazy morning, actually. I basically wanted to explain to you guys in this break the kind of what I think of the five buckets of work that I have as a trainee lawyer. So the first type of work is like transaction management. That's sort of what I was doing this morning, like finalizing documents ready for signing. So when the other side give us comments, we're not happy with this, we're not happy with this. I'll then be the one to put those in and look through them, check to make sure everything looks okay sending out the signing emails, so how to sign documents, and kind of just generally keeping up to date with like where all the documents are, who's looked at them, who hasn't, all that kind of stuff. The second bucket I see is really just drafting, and that's mainly for trainees on the basis of precedent. So past deals or things we have, like templates in our systems, we'll basically kind of take these templates and the precedent documents and insert kind of the details of the transaction, delete or amend any sections in order to reflect the deal structure that we're working on. Then the third type of work is legal research. This is something that I've actually done a surprising amount of. I thought it was going to be horrendously kind of dull and something I really wouldn't enjoy but actually because it's one of these areas where at a very junior level you can make real progress and you can really understand something better than even partners do maybe I've actually found that really rewarding the fourth bucket is what I would say is like own learning so that's where for example I'm working on a transaction at the moment that's a repack and I had absolutely no idea what a repack was 
I still don't fully understand like all of the intricacies, but you can't expect like your supervisor to tell you everything. So I do spend a significant amount of time, maybe kind of 20% of my overall time, just learning the kind of principles and what's going on in these deals. And that's just by reading the documents and looking stuff up online, finding out how things work. And the last bucket I would say is kind of like personal work. So that's stuff like, for example, I have an appraisal coming up soon. I then also do pro bono work and on the side, also I'm quite involved in the environment group we have at CC and trying to get that up and running again. So in terms of what I was actually doing this morning, I was doing that kind of transaction management bucket. And this is one of the areas where trainees get a relatively high degree of responsibility because there isn't tons of like law at this stage. It's really just a question of finalizing the documents and getting the other side to do what we need them to do. It's really great because you get that client exposure. You get to be on the phone. Like I was on the phone this morning to the other side and to my supervisor and making sure everything is running smoothly. It can be a little bit stressful, like this morning was a little bit stressful, but you get that little buzz, which I really do enjoy. There are parts of transaction management, which can be a little bit boring, but overall, I think that when you're reviewing those documents, and even if you're putting the other side's comments in, you're learning like, okay, what did they think was wrong with our documents? So even if it's kind of just copying things pretty manually, First of all, I really try and make sure I do a really good job on those basic tasks because that is fundamentally what my supervisor needs me to do and also try to learn as much as I can from those experiences. So yeah, another big feature of being a corporate lawyer generally is that because the work is so client focused, when stuff does come in that he client says needs doing urgently, the client generally will expect you to do it pretty flipping quickly. Okay, so half two, I still haven't had lunch, Beth. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you fancy making lunch? Mm, sure. <laughs> I would also like to be clear, I never normally don't make lunch. I'm always the lunch maker. 50-50. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but not today. Okay, so I have just finished at 2.39, sending out emails, basically with the compiled, like signed documents out to all of the parties. Occasionally this does happen where like over a lunchtime or of an evening over dinner, you basically have the other side or some reason that you absolutely need to get these documents out as soon as possible. And as we're waiting for stuff to come in from the parties signing the documents, I do take about an hour break. And although my work phone is never far away, even when I'm really busy, I do always try to make sure that I'm not just kind of pushing myself to do more and more and more without a break. I think these breaks are really important and when I don't take them is when I tend to make mistakes. When I go to get back to work at 3.30, I know that my mid afternoon slump is well on the way, especially when I've had such a busy morning. So at this point, I usually put up my standing desk and bam, I'm ready to start my second big task of the day, some drafting work. So for me, basically what drafting means is finding a document on the SharePoint site that we have for the whole firm. And that will have like either a template that is pretty close to what I need and will have footnotes explaining what I need to do in order to make the document right for me, or a kind of document from a past transaction that is pretty similar to the one we're currently working on. I've been sent over a document that says like kind of the terms of the transaction that we're working on, the term sheet, and I'm then gonna extract kind of the relevant details using my knowledge of this kind of transaction and that's kind of been acquired over the course of the last five months of doing this seat in derivatives. And I'm then gonna put that information from the term sheet into the final term. So I'm gonna draft the final terms of this transaction on the basis of a precedent from a previous transaction using the information in the term sheet. So yeah, I'm drafting this for just over an hour till around 4.40. And just to add, for anyone who's watched my desk setup video, I got quite a few comments asking if the Logitech MX Master Mouse and Craft Keyboard, which are my mouse and keyboard, which both do come with pretty crazy price tags, are worth it for lawyers. And for flicking through pages of PDFs and zooming in and out of documents, I've got to say both the keyboard and mouse are a lawyer's dream in my opinion. I sent my draft over to one of the associates in my group. And as a trainee, you'll very nearly always, if not always be getting someone to review your work before it goes out. So yeah, she'll make sure everything is okay before I hit send. I then send out a few final emails on the signing and make sure I'm clear with my supervisor what needs to happen at closing, which is later in the week. 
week. By 5.10, I've still got a few bits left to do, but after a pretty early start and busy morning, I'm at the point where I just need a change of scenery for 10 to 15 minutes before I get back to work, just to get rid of that brain fuzz. So I head out on a second walk of the day, again, keeping my phone with me so I can keep an eye on any emails coming in. And I genuinely do try to get out on at least one and often two walks a day at the moment. The way I'm kind of looking at it is that if I were in the office, I'd definitely leave the building twice in a day or at least move around the floor to have a chat with other people. So yeah, I'm trying to maintain a healthy relationship with my work laptop. We see each other a lot, but we do both need a little space to breathe. And on the topic of healthy habits, my habit tracker done reminds me while I'm out that I haven't stretched yet today. So I have literally a three minute stretch when I get back. At 5.30, I then put my blue light glasses on, a new addition to hope help me sleep a bit better after days spent sat in front of a screen and I do some reviewing of the documents for a transaction I'm working on. Okay so it is now 6 p.m and I've finished doing my own kind of learning from the documents that we have for this repack transaction we're doing. I've drawn a structure diagram which is something I quite like to do just to really familiarize myself moving forward with how these things work because although you don't really need it as a trainee when I then actually become an associate <laughs> properly doing these things I kind of need to know how they work. Now I've done that I'm going to spend probably the last hour of proper work for the day just doing some research that an associate in the group has asked me to do. I've got to say when I first started working I thought I was going to hate legal research like I never have been really into research hugely but I've found that it's one of the really intellectually stimulating bits of the job at the level of a trainee. And it's also one of the areas where, like I said earlier, you can actually kind of get to the level of a partner or beyond in one specific field by really mastering that. So I've had one particular bit of research I've been doing on the transition from LIBOR to Sonia and SOFA, which is basically just like an interest rate. But because I've kind of become a real expert in that and I'm fairly mathematically strong, versus other lawyers who generally tend not to like maths that's meant that I've been able to like help out a couple of partners with fully understanding it and obviously their knowledge is so much greater than mine of the whole but I'm able to like insert these little bits or these nuggets of information into their discussions which is really cool I've got involved in a couple of client presentations because of this legal research and overall like I've just learned an awful lot doing it so yeah I'm gonna jump into doing some research into SOFA which is like the US version of Sonia and then probably put, try and put together this document over the next couple of days. It's not particularly urgent, but yeah, just gonna try and make some progress for the next hour or so. So last but not least, the new way I'm now trying to finish every day is spending a minute or two filling out my progress report with everything I've done during the day and then planning tomorrow's work based on my Trello priority list and the stuff I didn't manage to get done today that isn't urgent that is. Okay, so it is now 7.20. I have finished work for the day, hopefully. So yeah, I wanna talk hours because I think it's probably like the biggest question anyone has when they're thinking about like, what's it really like to be a trainee lawyer? There are horror stories that go around of like all nighters for six months solid. That is, at least from my experience of talking to other people, exceptionally rare. Like there are very few people who spend six months or even one month doing kind of close to all-nighters or 1 a.m. finishes. I think that, at least in my experience, there are peaks and troughs. So you definitely go through periods where you're less busy and periods where you're more busy. It depends a lot on the seat you're doing. So if you're in a transactional seat, which I've been in, basically everything other than where people are suing each other in litigation, then you're likely to have these kind of peaks and troughs. So for me, a peak has been around midnight, 1 a.m. finish at the worst, and kind of the troughs, I've actually stayed relatively busy. In other seats, it may be that you have a whole month of finishing at like 4, 5, 6 p.m. without really too much to do all day, but then actually your peaks are like horrendously bad and you finish at 3 or 4 a.m. for a couple of weeks and then you get given some days off. So yeah, it's definitely not the case that anyone generally by and large gets like hammered for uh, a long period or at least longer than like say a couple of weeks to a month. 
but it definitely does happen. In terms of what that time is then doing, as you've kind of seen today, I think today was pretty representative. I reckon probably like 40% of my time is spent overall on the like transaction management stuff. So that was like sending out the emails, putting in comments from clients, all that kind of stuff. The next 20% is probably on drafting, the other 20% probably on like own learning, and then the final 10% maybe on legal research. Again, it will vary between different departments. If you're in litigation, it might be 30% legal research. But that gives you a rough idea of the kind of proportion of time that is being spent doing these things. Obviously in the run up to a big deal, when you're going up that peak, it's likely to be almost 100% transaction management and drafting. But in the quieter periods, I've really tried to kind of find some research projects, get involved in different things at the firm, like pro bono, or trying to start up like the environment group more. And I think those things are the things that can really keep you busy and occupied and learning during your downtime. Alexa, turn off the office. Okay. I then head straight upstairs and get on with helping Beth make dinner. And I guess this is a good point to stress that my overall experience of trainee corporate lawyer life so far definitely hasn't been delivery every night of the week because I'm so busy working. Overall, I'd say I've been able to maintain a pretty good work-life balance throughout my first six months. Yes, there are absolutely times when it has been busy, maybe a couple of weeks of very late finishes. And yes, there are parts of the job that can be a little bit dull. When you're running comparisons of documents over and over or inputting comments meticulously, but aren't there in any job. And even more than that, doing these things does make you more familiar with the documents you're working on. And I mean, you can't expect to walk in and just be able to draft documents you've never even seen before. Overall, I've learned tons already in just this six month period, especially in a department derivatives I knew nothing about. The people are so on it within the firm and everyone is incredibly helpful. And the job certainly hasn't consumed my entire life or at least it hasn't yet, but I'll keep you updated on that. So yeah, I hope you found this a good insight into a day as a trainee corporate lawyer. And if you have any questions, do hit me up in the comments. Plus, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and then check out my video on a day in the life of a qualified corporate lawyer.